Welcome everyone to this brief introduction to IdeaMaker 4.1, the slicing software by Race3D. This video will provide a short overview of what is new in the recent software update. First and foremost, we now have the possibility to apply textures to our models. We can simply use almost any image and use it to modify the surface of our part. Most of the common image formats are supported, such as JPEG, PNG, Bitmap, and TIFF. Additionally, there is now a .texture format as well. In order to manage this texture function in more detail, a new modifier function was added. This can prevent texture generation in the overlap zone. Another new functionality of IdeaMaker 4.1 is generating 3D models from 2D images. The coloration of the image indicates what areas of the model are extruded how high. Along similar, similar lines, you can now use 2D images to generate custom infill for your models. This will overwrite the infill percentage that was otherwise set. Take note that this function will lead to a much longer slicing process, including a longer preview generation because the G-code is far more complex. As a direct result, the print time itself will also increase. We will also have a brief look at the new option to set your printer as a belt printer, along with the new settings that are now available. Lastly, we will show the new option to print certain areas of your model using a different nozzle. We will achieve this using modifiers once again. There are a few other new features. Swiss francs have been added as a currency, Spanish language support has been added, the remote control page of your printer has been improved, and orthographic view is now available in the G-code preview. Additionally, a color to show what parts of your model are ironed has now been included with the preview function. Last but not least, there have been a number of G-code modifications to account for the new belt printer support and a longer list of bug fixes. For more details on these, please visit the IdeaMaker release notes page. Also, if you do have any questions, suggestions, or feedback, please leave a comment. Now, without further ado, let's jump right into IdeaMaker and look at textures, the new modifiers, and the image to model and infill functionalities. So here we are in IdeaMaker. As we know, uh, almost everything looks the same, but as I said, the first thing I want to show you is the uh, option to now apply textures to your model. So I'm going to import a model, and I have a test part here named uh, texture part, and this is what I'm going to use. Uh, it is important to note that these textures can only be applied to surfaces that are not parallel to the belt plate. So any texture that I apply will show up at the top and at the bottom, but it won't actually be applied during the slicing process. So if I want to apply a texture to this, there is a new button in the toolbar at the top named texture. If I click on this, I now have a drop-down menu that allows me to select what kind of texture to apply. You can have embedded textures that come along with your model, but in our case today, we will look at custom textures. Here, you now have a number of options as well. To add a texture to your part, you can either click this plus symbol to select an image uh, to use as a texture, or you can use this drop-down menu to import textures from your local disk, import them from the IdeaMaker library, or actually export textures. For now, we're just going to add one that I already have on the computer. So I'm going to open my textures folder, and we can see that I have a number of textures here. I'm going to select one, and then we will see that the texture has now been added. However, it looks kind of off. It's distorted. This is because I am currently looking at a cylindrical texture. However, my part more closely resembles a cube. So if I do select that, we can now see the bricks are evenly spaced across the front of my model. As I've mentioned, it does show up on the top as well, but it's not actually going to be applied here once we do slice the part. You can use uh, the other settings here to manipulate your texture. For example, I can move it using these buttons to the left or right. I can move it up or down on my part. I can decide how many times it appears uh, on my part. This will uh, decrease or increase the size. Now it's half as big, now it's a third as big in the xy direction, and I can do the same thing in the z direction as well. Then I can also rotate it relative to the belt pl platform if I do want it diagonally. I can also decide what happens to the pattern, whether it repeats, whether it gets mirrored, 
or whether it is just simply the pattern itself and then nothing else as we can see right here. So these are my options in these drop down menus. Uh, I will go back to repeat since that looks the nicest and I will actually rotate it back uh, to a horizontal position. I believe this is it. Can't quite see, my screen is too far away, there we go. So now that I, that I have my texture applied to my part, um, let me actually decrease the size again as well so we see it properly in the slicing uh, preview. I'm now just going to slice it with the standard settings and uh, we can see what we uh, get as a result when using this. As the software said, thin wall detection should be turned off when using uh, textures. So now that the print file is completed, let's have a look. In the slice preview now, we can quite clearly see that at the top of the model, no texture has been applied. However, from the front, we can see that now there's this brick texture that we had as an image uh, applied onto our part. The same is true for the sides and the back of our part, but again, not on the top or bottom. So, once I close the preview, I have mentioned that there's a new modifier to carefully manipulate where textures are applied. So, in order to test this, I will now go into the modifier tab, select my model and add a modifier. I'm going to add a sphere modifier that I have already prepared. So now I have a sphere in my model as well. And I'm going to move that inside of my part, like this. And now in the modifier selection, I will change this modifier to actually note texture at overlap with parent model. This is to prevent the texture from being applied wherever this sphere now overlaps with my actual model. So if I slice this once again, and then we look at the preview, uh, we will be able to see the difference uh, of what I have just done. Once again, open the preview. And now we can see that the texture is applied around the outsides, but anywhere where the sphere overlapped my model, no texture has been applied to the surface of my model. So I think that is quite clear. The last thing that I want to show with textures is that there are additional settings within your slicing profiles. So if you edit your slicing profile and at the top you select texture, you can here set a number of options. Um, for example, you can decide how uh, high the texture XY offset is. This will decide how much your texture gets embossed or uh, debossed from your model. Uh, you can change the texture resolution, which will make the edges a little sharper. And there is something called texture outside only, which, for example, if you have a standard part like a vase uh, that has an inside and an outside shell, basically, IdeaMaker will automatically recognize which is which and only apply the texture to the outside of your model. So. That's it for textures. As I have mentioned, there are a number of textures already uploaded to the Idea Maker library, and you can import some from there if you want to try this for yourself. Now, next up, I actually have the belt printer. So, um, uh, actually, the, the, let's do the image to model first. So, I'm not going to save this project. Instead, I am going to click on Import Model in order to actually import an image. And you can see that in the supported formats, image files are present as well. So I'm going to open this image, and then I have a number of options that allow me to customize what the model generated from this image will actually look like. I'm just going to accept, and we now see that I have a 3D model created from my part. The coloration, once again, will change how high the part is extruded. So the red area of the Erase 3D logo is extruded a little bit less than the black area of the font. And you can change this in that short settings menu that was opened uh, when importing this as an image. As I have also mentioned, we can now use 2D images to generate custom infill patterns. For that, you at the top need to go into the toolbar under Slice, Custom Infill Pattern, and once you click that, you can add or remove custom infill patterns using the plus and minus buttons. So I'm going to add one, and I'm going to add this 
this, this logo, basically, as my info pattern. And you can see that IdeaMaker converts any colors into a black and white scheme. And then you can still set a threshold, which is how sharp the edges are and how, uh, how sensitive IdeaMaker is when detecting where there is color and where there isn't. You can change the DPI and you can even change the size. Now, when slicing, I can now go into my uh, profile and in the infill tab, I can change my infill pattern type to my new pattern zero or whatever else I have named my pattern. As I mentioned, this will overwrite the infill density set above. So after I save, I could slice this part. However, as I mentioned, setting these custom infills will massively increase not only the slicing time, but the preview generation time as well, and your print time on top of that. So I'm gonna skip creating a preview of this for today. Uh, feel free to try it out at home. The next thing I wanted to show is the belt printer setup. So once again, I am just going to remove the part from my belt plate, and now I will change my printer to one I have already prepared, named belt printer. Now you can set any printer to be a belt printer using the printer settings. If you go there and click on the advanced tab, there's a checkbox at the bottom where you can enable or disable the belt printer setting. In addition to that, you can uh, select the gantry angle of your belt printer here. Once you have done that, your, belt, uh, your printer is now set up as a belt printer with a number of additional options that are now available. I am going to import a part just so we have one right here. And we can now see that if I go into the project overview, there is something called repetitions. This will tell IdeaMaker how many repetitions of this part to print on the belt. Take note that these repetitions will not be included in the estimated print time and estimated material consumption that IdeaMaker generates when slicing your part. In addition to that, if I go here to the pro, uh, pro, prepare to slice panel, excuse me, you can now add all the belt settings using the, using the plus button at the bottom. So if you click here and scroll all the way down, we now have 14 new settings that are uh, custom to belt printers. So if we enable them and scroll down, we can now see that we can change stuff like the belt raft offset, uh, the belt raft speed, and other such things to best prepare our part for slicing. So that is the belt printer support that is also new. The last thing I wanted to show is using a modifier to decide what part of your model will be printed with which nozzle. For that, I will switch back to a Pro 2 printer. I will keep the same part though, and I will move it back to uh, the middle approximately. And now I will add a modifier to this part. Specifically, I will use that same sphere that I already used earlier. So right here, now we have this sphere, and I'm gonna move that to intersect with my model that I already have, like so. And now, in the modifier tab, I will keep the change settings of overlap with parent model, so the sphere and the parent model will have different settings, and I will add something. And I'll add from the layer the modifier extruder setting. Using this, I can now set what the overlap area will actually use as, ex as its extruder. In this case, I will set it to the right extruder. As we can see, the parent model itself is printed using the left extruder, which is white. The right one is orange. And after I slice this part with just about any settings, we will now be able to see what that actually does to our part. If we go into preview, and now I change the setting from structure to extruder color, we can quite clearly see that the overlap area of the sphere and the parent model is now printed in a different color. This also extends not only to the outside shell, but to the infill as well. So that's all I had to show you in IdeaMaker today. Thank you very much for watching, and if you do have any questions or comments, as I said, please leave them uh, below. So I hope you have a great, great day, and I hope to see you next time.